This is going to be a close look at the gospel. So look at 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 1. It says, Moreover, brethren, I, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. So you see, the gospel is to be received. And many people know the facts of the gospel, but they haven't received it. For years I knew that Jesus Christ died for my sins, that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day. But I had to come to the point where I decided I was going to believe on that to save me. And that's what I did one day. I knew I was a guilty sinner. I knew I was going to go to hell. And I believed the gospel that I had already knew the facts of. I put my trust in that to save me. And that's salvation. Now verse 2, it says, By which also ye are saved. So you're saved by the gospel. The moment you place your faith on Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross, you're saved. By which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. So if you believe in vain, you are believing the facts in your head, but never come to the point where you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. For example, when I believed on him in my heart, I knew I was a sinner, and I came to him the best way that I knew how, and I told him that I was now relying on him to save me. Now verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for my sin, for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So number one, we see it as a bloody gospel. Christ died, but how did he die? He died by shedding his blood. And there is a preacher by the name of John MacArthur, he doesn't deny that the blood was shed. He just denies that the blood of Christ was God's blood. He says the blood of Christ was only man's blood and that it has no saving power. He said the saving power is only in his death and that the blood has no supernatural power to it. But that's against plain scripture. If you look at Acts 20 and verse 28, it says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. So that verse right there said that God purchased us with his own blood. It wasn't just his death, it was the blood. Now Colossians 1.20, And having made peace through the blood of of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him I say whether there be things in earth or things in heaven notice it says through the blood of his cross so if the cross represents death it wasn't just the death it was also the blood by the blood of his cross now Colossians 1 14 in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sin so redemption means to buy back uh, he bought us. He purchased us with his own blood. We were alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and we died. There was a time in your life when you were a little kid. Uh, everybody's age is different. and Before you reach the age of accountability, and you didn't know you were a sinner. And until you know you're a sinner, you know you've broken God's commands, you're safe. But then as soon as you find out that you're a guilty sinner, you have to come to Jesus Christ and believe the gospel. And the modern versions of the Bible will remove the blood from Colossians 1.14 and will read something like, In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. They'll take away the blood. But not only this, we are justified by his blood. Romans 5.9 says, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. So, the blood has saving power. It wasn't just his death. Uh, they couldn't have drowned him. They couldn't have uh, choked him or something to, to kill him. He had to die by shedding his blood. Now, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Back to looking at the rest of the gospel. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So Christ died for our sins. So it is a gospel for sinners. Romans 5, 6 says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. If you weren't, on, if you weren't ungodly, you couldn't be saved. 
And that's why you needed a Savior in the first place. Uh, the hardest people to get saved are the ones that think they're all right and that they think they're not so bad. And some people will say, well, I've never killed anybody, and I don't drink, and I don't do all this, so I'm not that bad. But if you're going to be saved, you have to know why you need to be saved. And that's because you are a sinner. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It says, for there is none righteous, no, not one. It says, our righteousness is filthy rags in the sight of God. And it says, the scripture hath concluded all under sin. And since it's a gospel for sinners, the person who died had to be sinless. There are people who deny the sinlessness of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 4.15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So he was tempted and went through everything that we go through, yet he did it all without sin. 1 Peter 2, 21 and 22 says, For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Now 2 Corinthians 5, 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So Jesus Christ knew no sin. But he was made sin for us. When Jesus Christ was on the cross, he literally became sin for us. And now Hebrews 7, 26 and 27. It says, For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once, when he offered up himself. So we have a high priest who's better than the high priest in the Old Testament because they had to offer up sacrifices for their own sins. But our high priest doesn't have any sin. And nobody is too good for the gospel because we're all sinners. And nobody is too bad for the gospel because God saves everybody. Everyone needs to be saved, and there isn't anybody who God won't save. So Jesus Christ became sin for us on the cross, taking our hell, taking our sin, and taking the wrath of God in our place. So he is our propitiation, meaning he appeased the wrath of God. And the Bible talks about the cup of God's wrath. In Matthew twenty six thirty nine, you have Jesus Christ praying to the Father, and he says, If it be possible, let this cup pass from me. And I believe this is referring to the cup of God's wrath. Because when Jesus Christ hangs on the cross, he will have the cup of God's wrath of sin. All the, all the wrath that God has towards the sin of mankind was poured on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can read more about this cup of God's wrath in Revelation 16, 9. It's talking about Babylon, that great city. And he says he's going to give unto her the cup of the winepress of the fierceness of his wrath. Genesis 15, 6 says, But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. So as soon as that cup gets full, the more you sin, or the more a nation sins, it gets get fuller and fuller and f fuller until the Lord just makes you drink it. So when a nation or people continue in sin, the cup of God's wrath begins to get more and more full until he makes them drink it. But the Lord Jesus Christ took the cup for us. He took our sin. He took our hell. He took our, the wrath of God. Now, what did, what did he do for, the, for those three days and three nights that he was in the heart of the earth? In Ephesians 4, 8, he says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive, and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? So that's talking about he went into the heart, at the, when he was buried, he went into the heart of the earth. And Matthew twelve forty says, For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. 
So Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, and he was in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. And the Old Testament saints, see, they couldn't go to heaven when they died because the blood hadn't been shed yet. So they went to a place called paradise in the heart of the earth before the resurrection. And then when Jesus Christ resurrected, he led captivity captive. He took them up to heaven with him. And you know that verse in Luke 23, 43 that we just read. Paradise is in the heart of the earth. He told the thief on the cross, he said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And then in Matthew 27, 52 through 53, it says, And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So when Jesus Christ was down there in the heart of the earth, he was preaching to the Old Testament saints and he was preaching to the lost people in hell. And that's what 1 Peter 3, 18 and 19 is talking about. It says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. And that could be referring to the angels because... The one, you know, the ones that left their first estate and they're down there in everlasting chains of darkness because they're spirits. And it's not our spirit that goes down there. It's our soul. So he went down there and preached into the spirits in prison. So although I don't believe that Jesus Christ burned in hell like a lot of people teach, he literally went to the place called hell and came back. So he went to hell and back for us. Acts 2, the... 231 says he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell neither his flesh did see corruption and next I want to say this gospel is a gospel that proves the deity of Jesus Christ uh, 1 Corinthians 15 3 and 4 says for I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So now I want to show you what the resurrection proves. In Romans 1, 4 it says, And declare to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So the resurrection proves that he's God. It says, And declare to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. See, when you call Jesus Christ the Son of God, as Romans 1, 4 calls him the Son of God, you're saying that he's God. And I talked to this drunk once about salvation, and he argued with me about Jesus Christ not being God, but only being the Son of God. But he didn't realize that when you call him the Son of God, it makes him equal with God. John five eighteen says, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. So just like men have babies that are men, when God has a son, he has a son that's God. And Mary was with the child of the Holy Ghost. See, Jesus Christ wasn't just born one day. He's always been here because he's God. But he came down in the flesh. You see, it's a mystery. But man, men beget men, and God begets God. Uh, Philippians 2, 6 says, Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. The new versions will change this many times and make it say something like, He didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped. And that's just a subtle attack on the deity of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is God and He knew that He was equal with God. It's hard to understand because it's a mystery. As 1 Timothy 3.16 says, it says, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up into glory. So the mystery of godliness is about how could God come down in the flesh and be born as a baby and get fed by his mother, have his diapers changed and have to learn to walk it's a mystery that we can't understand but to deny the resurrection is to deny his godhood because if he wasn't god he would have stayed dead he wouldn't have gotten back up 
And if he didn't get back up, then everything that we're doing as Christians is pointless. 1 Corinthians 15, 12 through 13 says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? So if Jesus Christ didn't die, then everything we are doing today, if he didn't die and resurrect, everything we are doing today is in vain. So anyone who denies his godhood or his resurrection or his blood is an enemy to the gospel. So what was the Lord Jesus Christ doing when he resurrected? When he resurrected, he took the Old Testament saints with him and he applied the blood in heaven. Hebrews 9.12 says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. So, it's all about the blood. It's all about the resurrection. It's all about Jesus Christ. If you deny any of those major things, then you're against what the Bible says. But this has been a close look at the gospel.